It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Coach Ross Simple in his 12th season with Dakota Wesleyan as we are previewing the 2023 college football season. Our stop today is Mitchell, South Dakota. And Coach, last season, 2-9, and nine, you've been since through the spring since then. You come away with a victory in the final game of the season, maybe a, a little bit of momentum coming into 2023. What's the spring looked like for you all? Yeah, the spring was was really good for us um, in the standpoint that we had 75 guys on campus um, this winter and spring, which is the most we've ever had. Um, I've technically been at Dakota Wesleyan for 14 total seasons, two as a, an assistant, um, and then going into my 12th season as a head coach. And so to have 75 guys um, after a two and nine season, I think says a lot about our guys and, and where they're at and what they believe that we can do. Um, you know, if you're looking at it strictly from a website and a roster and, uh, you know, a schedule, you're saying, well, two and nine, they, you know, they got a lot of work to do, which is, is true. Um, you know, we graduated technically at 13 seniors, uh, after last season, 10 of which could come back for another, another year. Uh, five of those 10 decided to come back. Uh, so really graduated eight guys. Um, and those five guys that came back for another year, um, I talk about those guys a lot. That's the Adam DeYoungs, Jamin Aaron, Keel Nelson, Hunter Cordell, Parker Grojohn. All five of those guys have their their life in front of them. And if you're looking at just the record, it would be really easy for those guys to say, hey, you know what, I've I've done my due diligence. I've, I've put in my time and my effort. I'm going to move on with, you know, the rest of my career and my future. Um, and, and for some reason, those guys believe that one more season is what they want to do with our team and our program. Um, and now fast forwarding into this upcoming fall, you know, that that senior class number all of a sudden changes to 25 or 26. So um, I, I say that to kind of describe where we're at last year. I mean, we played 18 true freshmen last year that did not redshirt um, and only graduating eight guys. We were the definition of young. And, you know, another birthday for everybody. And then all of a sudden, everybody's experienced. So um, that's kind of where our outlook is going from the winter with the amount of guys. And then just the experience that we had throughout the spring. Uh, the spring in South Dakota was essentially non-existent. I'm glad I wasn't a baseball coach um, at that point because they, they had all kinds of stuff. We were, we were frustrated with snow for practice, um, you know, pretty much the first half of our spring. Um, and our kids handled that well. Our coaches handled that well. And, and uh, you know, I think we got a lot accomplished this spring um, with just our schemes, but also just um, experience and, and finding out who's, who's going to be contributors, contributors for us, who's going to help us with some depth in certain positions. Um, you know, and then, then your focus kind of transitioned to the new guys coming in the fall over the summer and where they fit in. Well, Coach, what you just described sounds like an ex exciting time to to want to watch Tiger football because uh, you're talking about uh, players that are coming back with that experience. Let's let's talk about a few of those and start with the offense. Austin Lee, who eligibility wise was a freshman, Connor Drake also a freshman last season. Both saw time at quarterback and both dealt with injuries over the course of the year, and they're both coming back for you. Yeah, um, you know Austin and Connor are, are both done a tremendous job. Um, throughout the winter, throughout the spring, um, you know, Connor was probably a little bit slower coming back just in the fact of his injury and, um, you know, but was able to participate in spring ball, which was, which was really good to see. Um, and obviously we're going to rely heavily on both of those guys because, you know, they, they have the experience, you know, I think there's areas that they want to improve. There's areas that we need them to improve. They're aware of those things. Um, you know, and, and I think they've really put their best foot forward to do that. Um, you know, we got two two true freshmen coming in, uh, both South Dakota kids that we're we're really excited about, and you know, just from that, you know, we got four quarterbacks total, um, and and we're really honest with guys um, in the recruiting process, and I think you have to be even more honest with quarterbacks because every quarterback wants to play, and um, if we have a chance and and feel like we need to play three guys, then we're going to do that. If if there's one one clear cut. Um, you know, number one on that group, that's what we're going to do. But, um, you know, obviously Austin has the most experience in terms of being in our, our program for the longest amount of time. Uh, you know, Connor has started and played in games, which obviously helps him. And then you got a couple of young guys coming in that maybe don't have any experience or knowledge of what we're doing, but ability-wise really bring a lot to the table. Well, 
Coach, uh, whoever uh, is is going to be back there for you, leading the way coming up, uh, definitely has some more experience in the backfield with him as well. You already mentioned a couple of these uh, these players that are coming back. One of those, Jamin Aaron, who had a 1,200-yard season last year and uh, realistically has an opportunity to be at the top of the t- Tiger uh, career rushing list when all is said and done. Yeah, uh, you know, Jamin, when, when you can be a first-team all-conference running back in the GPAC, uh, I think that says something about your ability. Obviously, he didn't get all those yards by himself. Um, you know, there's a lot of guys working their tails off, blocking and doing things. But, um, you know, at some point, somebody's got to carry the ball and, and um, you know, run through a tackle. And I think that's what, you know, at the last half of the season specifically, you know, Jamin really came into his own. And, you know, every team knew that he was going to get the ball um, more than, you know, 15, 20 times. And, and uh, he Jamin embraced that, our, our – our guys blocking for him embrace that, and and I think that's something that we're looking forward to, um, you know, throughout this fall. Um, he's like you mentioned, he's already in our top ten in terms of single season and career rushing record, um, you know, and and uh, a guy that we're hoping to continue to move up that ladder. He does everything right. Um, he graduated at the end of this spring, and so he's taking master's classes right now. Um, you know, it just kind of says a lot about him and the type of kid he is. And the, the interesting thing about Jamin is Jamin technically has two years of eligibility left. Um, now, I don't know if I can talk him into a sixth year, uh, but um, it's, it's kind of crazy how, you know, all these guys that are kind of in that senior class right now probably started as freshmen, you know, came in as freshmen or were in their second year. And so that COVID year, um, now we're starting to see the benefit of that. We, re- we really didn't see the benefit of the COVID year initially because we were still so young and now we're starting to get to that point where having a few of those guys using a fifth year um, or some of our, our guys that came in as true freshmen that are, are now seniors academically but still have two years of eligibility left. We're speaking now with Coach Ross Semple from Dakota Wesleyan here on the Summit and I encourage you please subscribe to our channel Midwest Sports Net. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond Coach Simple in his 12th season as the head coach for the Tigers. And I know another name that you've already mentioned as well, so let's uh, bring it up on the other side of the ball, Adam DeYoung, who had a uh, a fantastic season. I tried to say fantastic and stellar at the same time, and uh, I I, I imagine you probably run out of words to describe uh, – he had the, the year he had another all American year and, and a fantastic job for you all and in, in helping to lead the way on defense. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, the, there's not enough superlatives when you're talking about uh, a first team all American, um, you know, Adam DeYoung is, is exactly what you're looking for from a safety. He's big, he's physical, he's fast. Um, you know, he scored, he was number two in the country in terms of defensive points scored at the end of the season last year with, um, you know, three interceptions returned for touchdowns. Um, I think he had a, a blocked extra point return for two points. I mean, um, those things are, you know, if you do one of those things in a game, it's a huge play uh, to do that. Though, that many times throughout a season is pretty incredible. Um, and another guy that, that graduated, he's a, he's a nursing major. Um, he's probably going to take his boards, you know, this month um, and, uh get a get a nursing job but he's putting that all on hold uh for one more semester of football and again that those are you know i kind of let in with that with those fifth year guys and some of the things that they have out in front of them um and having those guys coming back for you know not, we're really counting it by days now you know we only have a certain amount of days left with those guys but um you know adam he, he coordinates everything in the back half for us um he's a leader he's a guy that everybody can look to and and we put a lot on his plate, and we expect him to handle it, and, and he uh, he doesn't disappoint when it comes to those things. Coach, it seems we, we've talked about players with a lot of experience, but then some that just were starting to get experience last season, some of those younger players, a couple of linebackers that uh, were listed as freshmen last year, Leighton Idy and Grayson Hanson, among those other players on defense for you, uh, coming back and, and a part of, of your defensive stand. Yeah, I, I think, you know, if you – and I'll kind of go back to the offensive guys too, as young guys. But you know, you mentioned Leighton. Uh, you know, Leighton started every single game for us. Grayson Hanson, a true freshman, um, that kind of had some some roles, uh, rotational roles early on, and then transitioned himself into a starting role um, as a true freshman. Um, and then as the end of season, you know, Joe Van Overshield at, at inside linebacker, um, playing on a lot of special teams, um, is another guy. And then Landon Rusink. 
you know, a day one starter for us at corner, um, starts our first two games at corner and then gets hurt um, and then kind of finishes up the season and, and fin- plays the last few games for us as, as a true freshman at corner. And so um, those are some guys, obviously, defensively that uh, we have a lot of high hopes for. And, um, you know, again, we kind of mentioned the birthdays. Another year uh, for those freshmen is, is critical. Um, you know, going to the offensive side, you know, guys like Max Robb uh, played tight end for us as a true freshman. Nolan DeVore played, uh, you know, started games at tight end for us as a true freshman. Cole Holden, um, you know, had three touchdown catches as a true freshman at receiver. Um, you know, some of those young guys. And, you know, you always talk about everybody's excited about the, the upperclassmen. Everybody's excited about the new guys, which is true and, and, and relevant. But, you know, we finally are getting to a point now where that middle group, that kind of unforgotten group, those second year guys, those third year guys, um, you know, we got a lot of guys that are in that group for us um, that we're excited about. You know, offensively, it's it's Preston Nedved, Logan Furbach, you know, Wyatt Bannon top three receivers that, you know, have now been in our system for three or going into four years um, that, that really provide a lot for us. You know, offensive linemen with Parker Grote, John, Trent Sukit, Jerry Montgomery, um, you know, Ethan Rogich was a, a redshirt freshman last year. All those guys, instead of being first and second year guys now, are second and third year players. Um, and just their development physically, uh, but just mentally, um, a lot of guys that we're looking forward to there. I think one guy that I've missed out on defensively to talk about um, is Ethan Engen uh, at DN. end. He's 6'5", 240 pounds. He blocked six kicks last year. Um, he was an all-conference honorable mention kid for us. Um, and again, a, another guy that you know, you can see him last year in his third season really embrace not just what to do and how to do it, but now go do it really well. And, um, you know, and, and so we we're starting to get that middle ground um, in terms of depth and, and um, production a lot better off than we were in the last few years. Coach, let me let me mention one more. And, and I appreciate the, the preview, a fantastic preview of the Tigers heading into 2023. Keel Nelson, uh, you know, we've gone back and forth from offense to defense. Let's talk about somebody that pays, plays a part of special teams as well. Nelson, a great receiver for you, but also a return specialist. And uh, he, he gets a job, the job done punting, too. Yeah, he, he does the job punting for us. He's a kick returner for us. Um, you know, he was an all-conference receiver for us. And not that long ago, he was playing quarterback for us. And and he lined up at quarterback at times last year for us. And so um, I think, you know, the, the amount of things that Keel Nelson did for us last fall uh, during the season, there's I don't know if there's anybody in the country that did what he did, that returned kicks, that punted the ball. He's our holder on, on extra points and field goals. Um, He lines up at quarterbacks. He threw a ball last year, completed a pass, ran the football. um, And then all of a sudden, hey, go play receiver and uh, run routes and be really good at it. And, um, you know, I'm glad you mentioned him because he is a guy that, um, you know, a lot of things can go through Keel and and obviously his ability. Um, We wouldn't have him doing those things if he wasn't capable. Um, Realistically, you know, based on what we're talking about right now and what he was able to do for us last year, we probably should have put him there earlier. You know, I mean, when he's your quarterback, you don't want him punting a whole lot or you don't want him for sure returning the ball. Um, And then we probably missed out on just some production out of him. Not that he didn't give us production at quarterback. I'm just saying uh, the amount of things, the amount of depth charts that he's shown up on, you know, all of a sudden he, you know, it's it's kind of funny when we talked about moving him to receiver, he comes up to, he's the first guy to come up to to me and say, uh, can I punt now? And Oh yeah. Yep. That's actually a really good idea. You know, we, we haven't had to do that, you know, and so somebody that's more than willing to do whatever you need him to do. Um, you know, you talk about a lot of, a lot on Adam DeYoung's plate as a, as a DB and an all American, but you know, I think Keel Nelson and what he's got his hands in and what we're expecting him to do um, has just as much, if not more in terms of mentally what he's got to do and, and what we need him to do. And he doesn't complain about it. And, and, um, just a big, strong, physical kid that, you know, we're really looking forward to seeing what he can do this fall also. Well, Coach, getting to see those players on the field, it's going to happen pretty soon, talking about counting hours and counting days until then. August 26th, 
uh, the season gets underway. Let's talk about the opening of your schedule there. You have the folks from Madison coming over uh, to play Dakota State on August 26th, and then GPAC schedule gets underway. Also another home game, Hastings on September 2nd. You go on the road to Doan on the 9th, and then it's homecoming against Midland on September 16th. Yeah, our, our schedule is a little bit more favorable than it was last year. Um, you know, I think last year three of our first four were on the road or four of our first six or something like that, and and now that's kind of flip-flop for us. So, you know, being able to play in Mitchell um, is always a positive, but when you talk about just being in Mitchell and the support our team gets and, and the way that people show up for our games, um, it's, it's definitely a home field advantage. So we're excited about that, you know, and being at home. Um, you know, the Dakota State game, we, we've been on the wrong end of that for, you know, a long time now. And that's something that, um, you know, we want to change that. It isn't a conference game, but, uh, you know, when you're 45 minutes down the road, um, you know, they, they have the bragging rights right now and, and they've, they've earned that. And so um, that's obviously a motivating factor for us, um, you know, being able to, to say that you're winning that in-state rivalry game uh, with Dakota State and, and now Mount Marty added into the conference. Um, you know, those in-state games are, are huge games. And, um, you know, so being able to have them at home, um, you know, the first game of the year, kind of kicking off the season um, is, is really exciting for that. Um, always a big game, whether it's in Mitchell or Madison. Um, both teams travel extremely well. So excited about that. And, you know, the other thing that I think is going to be critical for us is having a bye week in the middle of the season. Um, you know, our bye week was our last game of the or our last week of the season last year. So, um, and we played a JV game and that was fantastic. But um, other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of benefit to our bye week, you know, in terms of recovery or preparation or, you know, evaluation at that point. All right, coach. Well, again, get to the way August 26th. Again, Dakota State, Dakota Wesleyan. And that one's going to be in Mitchell this year. Coach Ross Simple, thank you so much for taking time with us today. We're going to follow the Tigers through the 23 season. And we appreciate you taking time to preview that season with us here on Midwest Sportsnet. No problem. It's my pleasure. Thank you.